Okay, we're back. I've drawn this thing on the board, and and it repeats, right? This is just one uh, signal from a heart contracting. And what you'll hear this called an EKG or an ECG. Uh, it's electrocardiogram with a C, but um, I think maybe uh, in German it's a K. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, you'll often hear, a, hear it referred to either way, and that's what we're talking about. And what we're talking about is a measurable electrical impulse from, in, from your heart. And you can detect it by putting electrodes on your body, and, and we'll be doing this in lab, um, I think. Yeah, but anyway, um, I'm not sure. I'll have to look and think about lab. But, but yeah, it's part of, of a, one of the labs that we normally do. <laughs> um, but what we're doing, what you're doing is you're monitoring the contraction of the, and relaxing of the various parts of the heart. And so it consists of what amounts to three different sections. And so they're the P, and then this area here in the middle called QRS, and then over here is T. And then you get P, QRS, and T. And by the way, it drives me crazy. I've even seen um, graphic designs for like nursing stuff where they don't do this right. If you're gonna have a graphic of an ECG, please make sure you have a P, Q, R, S, and a T, followed by a P, Q, R, S, and a T, unless you're trying to show somebody who's had a heart attack. Uh, so anyway, um, so what do they represent? So we're on slide 16, and we, and we have to think about what is that heart doing? And we were just saying, we said we have this SA node and what it's going to do, you tell me. Yeah, it's going to cause the two atria to contract. That's the P wave. That's the P wave. That's what's going on. You're measuring the contraction of the two atria. Now, when you're looking at the heart, in lab, um, what you're going to see is that the muscle, that the, the atria are not particularly muscular, and so we get a, a very small signal. But when you get, especially with this beef heart, but it's it's relative um, and in size bigger, but but the the proportions are the same between atria and ventricles you'll see the ventricles are much, much more muscular. So what we have is we have this big signal. We have a little small signal from the atria, the P wave. And then we get this big signal, the QRS, um, which, represents the, which represents the contraction of the ventricles. And then... And this is time, by the way. So we have, we have the contraction of the atria with a little bit of time, and then the contraction of the ventricles, and then with a little bit of time, and then we have the T wave. Now, what would the T wave be? Hmm. It's the relaxing of the two ventricles. Why didn't we see the relaxing of the to atria. Uh-huh. Now that's a question for you. Why do we not see a signal that is representative of the relaxing of the two atria? We see contraction of the two atria. That would be atrial systole. And when this is going on, this is uh, the, the ventricles are in um, ventricular diastole, right? And then, though, when the ventricles are in systole, contracting, the two atria are in diastole. That's this relaxing, and we don't see it. Hmm. Look at the size of the two signals. The, the size of the P wave versus the size of the QRS. When we're talking about the contraction of the, uh, it's hard for me to do this. <laughs> anyway, the contraction of the two atria, 
versus the contraction of the two ventricles, the signal is small. And then when we say the relaxing of those big ventricles, well, it's a pretty small signal too. So, so what do you think happens when we're, look, when we're seeing this big signal from the contracting of the two ventricles? Well, it hides the relaxing phase of the two atria. So, so it's, it would be there, except that it's completely blown out of the water, so to speak. It's completely hidden behind this big signal, which is the QRS, the contraction of the two ventricles. All right, let's see what's next. We can graphically, we can graphically look at this ECG. And I'm not sure if you can see it very well. Let's see. I guess you can. Uh, we'll do what we can. So, so here, I'm all the way over here. Um, so right here at the, in this upper um, left corner, you can see the contraction start in the right atrium. And we're looking over here at a graph of the signal. And so you can start to see the P wave. And then as it spreads down to the next graph, you can see that both of the two atria are contracting and we get this little blip there. Um, and then there's a little bit of time. So we have a little bit of time. We had said that, uh, I had mentioned that it's about two tenths of a second. Um, and then we get this QRS signal, um, which is the contraction of the two ventricles. Um, and so we end up, you know, here it is again over here. And then we had said we have this period of time where we then start to see them relax and we get the T wave. Okay, so, so on here, remember we had said, so one of the things that is interesting, and I mentioned it before, but remember the ventricles are going to be filling passively. Um, this is just kind of review, and it's on the slide, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, the ventricles fill passively about two-thirds of their volume. So, 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 you know, the, the atria are above and blood trickles down on its own to fill the ventricles. And then when during the P wave, during, during um, atrial systole, you get that last 30% or 33% of it to fill up, you know, the ventricles the rest of the way. Um, so what does that do? So when, as the ventricles are filled, filled by the two atria, they build up a little bit of pressure, right? But there's this gap, there's this period of time. So we have this period of time where you've got the ventricles filled and they start to contract, but nothing happens. Yeah, nothing happens at first. And the reason for that is you have to build up pressure. So we have this period of isovolumetric contraction where the pressure in the ventricles has to build. When someone takes your blood pressure, they don't say, ah, oh, you're 120 over zero, right? They'll, they'll say, you're 120 over 80. And both of those are pressure measurements. And so what that means is that even between contractions of your heart, you have that value of 80 as pressure in your arteries, right? It's 120 over 80. It, the pressure fluctuates from 80 to 120 back down to 80. And we have the pulmonary and aortic semilunar valves that are between the ventricles and the um, and the, the two arteries. And so we have this pressure that has to be overcome the 80 that's in the two arteries. So we have preload pressure. That's the starting to contract these two ventricles. And the pressure is building, building, building. And at what point do we start having 
uh, blood ejection into the arteries. So when would it happen? So, so the pressure in the ventricles are 70, 71, 72, 73, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 80, 81. All of a sudden, the pressure is greater than the pressure in the arteries and you start to get blood ejection. So, so we have preload and afterload is the pressure that has to be overcome that is in the artery before you get blood ejection. Um, and so we have, we have the ventricular systole, isovolumetric contraction, nothing happens, nothing happens until you exceed the pressure in the arteries and then the ventricle is pushing harder and harder and it makes that pressure in the arteries spike to what? 120, right? 120 over 80, 120 over 80. It, it's all tied in with the heartbeat. All right, I've gone 11 minutes. We'll stop right here. Um, we have some, some other videos here dealing with ECGs. Good idea to watch them. Okay.